I'm Doug Parker with Cruise Radio, and today we're going to take a deck-by-deck tour of Carnival Mardi Gras, telling you everything we know about the new ship and offering a few tips along the way. Before we get to Carnival Mardi Gras, if you like this video and you'd like to see more content, feel free to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. All right, so the Carnival Mardi Gras won't welcome passengers until the summer of 2020, but people are already getting super excited about this ship. Bookings opened up at the very end of January and immediately it set a sales record for Carnival. And it's easy to see why people are so excited. Of course, there's going to be six different zones on this ship. As you may have already heard, these six different zones are going to be the Grand Central, which is the atrium, the French Quarter, kind of a uh, New Orleans type flair, La Piazza, an Italian zone, um, Summer Landing, that's going to be like the Guy's Burger joint towards the back of the ship, a really, really cool area there, Lido Deck, and of course the ultimate playground with that roller coaster going 187 feet above sea level and up to 40 miles an hour. So we're going to start the Carnival Mardi Gras tour on deck number four because that's where the deck plans start that Carnival just released. And now you'll see a couple of these spaces as we go through the deck plans aren't labeled because Carnival is announcing different venues in the next uh, you know coming months. So we're going to start on deck number four, which is interesting because Carnival normally starts on deck number one. And we're going to find a variety of staterooms here, including the interior staterooms, premier interior cabins, and the ocean view cabins. Uh, the real attraction here is going to be the family harbor staterooms. That's dedicated to families, and there's a lounge that goes along with this. Interesting note here, there aren't any family harbor balcony staterooms on the Mardi Gras, so guests will either have to have their choice between interior ocean view or deluxe ocean view family harbor cabins. Deck number four is also where you'll find Camp Ocean. That's the kids program that caters to kids between 2 and 11, uh, as well as Dr. Seuss's Bookville will be here on deck four as well. Moving on to Deck 5, this is where you'll find the Cloud 9 Spa, so it's not surprising you'll also find some of those Cloud 9 Spa staterooms here as well, including a few balconies. The only other balconies that you'll find on Deck Number 5 are those Cove balconies. If you've never heard of the term Cove balconies before, it's the balconies that are lower to the water, so they're partially enclosed. They offer a great view of the water, but still protect you from the elements, and a lot of the Cove balconies have latches where if the weather gets too bad, they can actually shut the door uh, of the balcony to protect you from the outside elements. Um, if you're wondering of uh, the balcony size on this ship, it's going to be 44 square feet. Of course, you'll find several different types of balcony categories on this ship, but that's going to be the standard size. The last part of Deck 5 here is the chef's table located in the back of this ship. As you can see, there's really nothing around the chef's table as far as any venues that have been revealed. Maybe it's the kitchen because on the newer Carnival ships, the chef's table is normally done right there in the middle of the kitchen. So we'll have to stay tuned to see what that's going to bring. Up to deck number six aft, you'll find a big space reserved for the Palm Restaurant. Now, we don't know exactly what that is. It could almost be safe to assume that it's going to be a main dining room, but we'll have to stay tuned to see what that is. Deck six is also where you'll find two of these six zones or neighborhoods that make up the public areas on Mardi Gras. The first one is Grand Central that encompasses the large atrium with its multi-story deck high glass and killer views over the ocean. And then heading forward from the atrium, you'll find the Punchliner Comedy Club, which on this ship has its own dedicated space. Normally it's held in the limelight, but now it has its own spot. Also the Piano Bar 88 and oddly enough, the Cloud9 Fitness Center. And then just past that will be the Mardi Gras Theater. Heading opposite from the atrium, you'll enter the French Quarter. This is where you'll find the new jazz bar, as well as something called the Flamingo Restaurant. Now, Carnival hasn't officially released the name of the jazz bar, but the photos seem to indicate that it'll be called Magnolia. You'll also find some of the fun shops on this deck, as well as Cherry on Top. As we go up to deck number seven, we're going to start at the Mardi Gras Theater. This is the second deck of two. Um, so there's a first deck down below us, and the second deck is on seven of the Mardi Gras Theater or the show lounge. And then moving towards the aft from here, we'll hit the casino. Now, the deck plans show part of the casino overlooking the atrium. So it'll be interesting to see if they enclose this area, maybe with a glass partition or, you know, plexiglass or something to prevent smoke from drifting down into the atrium. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line had a problem with this on their breakaway class ships um, with the smoke going into 678 Ocean Plaza. So we'll see what Carnival does with this area. Making our way aft, we're going to pass the Limelight Lounge and the Alchemy Bar, which is definitely a favorite among a lot of us here. And based on the renderings, it also looks like Alchemy Bar will be getting a nice spiffy makeover, so excited to see that. Next up is the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse, and then as we mentioned earlier, the Palm Restaurant. 
Heading up to deck number eight is where you're going to find a crowd favorite, the Havana area. So the, all the staterooms on this deck will have various Havana categories, and they'll have exclusive daytime access to the Havana section. Now, unlike the Havana retreats on the Vista class of ships, Mardi Gras won't have hot tubs. It'll have an area called a relaxation pool, but that's pretty much about it. So I'm kind of interested to see what Carnival does with this area because they're really trying to sell this as a daytime access kind of exclusive perk. Um, but you got to have some hot tubs in there, I would think, right? Some of the most popular restaurants are going to be on deck number eight, uh, including Gigi's Asian Kitchen, Bonsai Sushi Express, and Bonsai Teppanyaki. As we head further aft, we'll enter La Piazza. That's where you'll find Cucina del Capitano and Pizzeria del Capitano. That's your 24-hour pizza. Pixel's Photo Gallery also here, as well as the Shore Excursion and Guest Services Desk. Interesting to have it towards the back of the ship. Normally, it's, you know, Guest Services is right there midship. And finally, at the very back of Deck 8, you'll find Summer Landing. This is the zone that features an expanded Guy's Pig & Anchor Smokehouse brew house, which really looks like it's going to be beefed up if you check out the pictures. Um, a lot of outdoor seating here, a pool situated on the very back, as well as some killer views. And not too far from the water, you're on Deck 8, and the Havana area on the Vista class ships are on Deck 5. Decks number 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 15, you're going to find cabins, cabins, and more cabins. Over on cruiseradio.net, we just posted a story at some of the different types of staterooms and suites on board. We'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, but let's take a look at a quick few while we're here. So if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of the regular interior staterooms and the Cloud 9 interior staterooms, that's the spa staterooms, um, you'll see the big difference is the color palette. As you probably expect, the spa rooms are a little more muted when it comes to the shades of blue and yellow. The Havana interiors, on the other hand, are all about the bright pops of color. And that pretty much holds true as you move up through the balconies and the suites. On to deck number 16, that's going to be branded the Lido Zone, or neighborhood. When it comes to a carnival ship, new or old, you always know what you're going to find on the Lido deck. You're going to have the main pool there, it's called the Beach Pool. The Lido Marketplace, that's the buffet. And then the Tides Pool at the very back of the ship, which will have two hot tubs. We don't really know yet, as far as eating and drinking venues, what will be located right here. There's definitely a Blue Iguana Cantina, but there's nothing on the deck plans that indicate whether there will be a Red Frog Rum Bar. And we do know that Guy's Burger Joint is definitely not on this deck uh, by the pool as it is on other Carnival ships. You also find some staterooms scattered around on deck number 16 as well. Deck number 17 is where you'll find everyone's favorite, Guy's Burger Joint. You'll also find the two young adult spaces, Circle C, which is for ages 12 to 14, and Club O2 for 15 to 17 year olds, as well as the Warehouse Arcade up here. Not much else shaken on deck number 17. Some spots for some loungers, some uh, more staterooms scattered in here. If you look at the front of the ship though, you're gonna have that massive deluxe Vista suite. And if you look at the balcony sizes on these things, it, it wraps around the front of the ship, which is going to be an awesome view if you have the uh, means to book that cabin. Getting towards the end here, we come up to deck number 18. This is going to be a really popular spot because it's the front of the ship and you'll have that Serenity deck, which is Carnival's adults only area. This plan shows it having a pool and a couple of hot tubs, but there's not much else known about this area quite yet. Meanwhile, the aft section of Deck 18, that's where you're going to find the ultimate playground. So a zone featuring Sports Square, the Carnival Waterworks, a miniature golf area, and then you go up one more level to Deck 19, and that's where the loading platform for Bolt is going to be. That's the roller coaster Carnival is putting on Mardi Gras. So there you have it. There's the deck walkthrough of Carnival Mardi Gras. We'll be seeing her inaugural sailing in August of 2020. Bookings are now open for that sailing. Prices don't look too bad, although some of the suites are a little bit pricey right now. What do you think of Carnival Mardi Gras? Do you think it's too big? Do you like it? Will you sail it or did you book it? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content, feel free to subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Once again, my name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio and the Cruise Radio Daily News Briefs. You can find both of those wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. We'd love for you to join us. And thank you so much for watching.